Hello, Thunder Wizards. So, today we are going to continue our series of planets in different houses for the Aruta Lagna. And today we're going to be talking about what happens if you have Jupiter in your third house and this is your Aruta Lagna. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Aruta Lagna, this is a concept in Vedic astrology and not Western. So please don't try and apply your Western chart to this uh, because Vedic astrology has a completely different um, calculation system. So your planets may be in different houses and different signs. So this is only if you have uh, know your Vedic chart. If you don't know your Vedic chart or you don't know what your Aruta Lagna is, you can go to astrology.thunderwizard.com and of course subscribe and hit the bell button so that uh, we can talk about your Aruta Lagna when we get to it. So, Jupiter in the third house in uh, Vedic astrology as your Aruta Lagna. So first we need to talk about what is the Aruta Lagna. The Aruta Lagna is, to make it short and sweet, this is how people see you. It is your superpower. Your Aruta Lagna is what will give you success in your career, your business life, and in your personal life. When you were born, you were born with a specific Lagna, which is the rising sign. In Vedic astrology, we use your rising sign as your sign because the rising sign changes every 15 minutes. It gives you a very exact viewpoint of how you interface with your reality. Vedic astrology is very practical in that it wants to look at how you, not just your personality, how you feel about yourself on the inside, but how you interact with the world. And your lagna, your rising sign, is how you view your world when your soul comes into incarnation. So from that, depending on all kinds of different factors which have to be calculated, uh, we find out how you are seen in the world. So the Aruda Lagna is often called the reflection. Actually means mount. Like when you mount a horse. It is your vehicle. So your Aruta Lagna is your vehicle. It is your superpower. Now, if you know what your superpower is, then you know how to exploit that for your own success and for other people's benefit. And when you do, people like you and they want to hire you, uh, buy your products, give you money, be your friend, those kinds of things. If you don't know what you how, if you don't even know, you know, if you're walking around uh, on foot trying to get all over town and you don't realize that you have a supersonic motorcycle back in your garage, then you're working against yourself. And that's what happens when people don't know what their Aruta Lagna is, or even worse, when they're trying to present themselves differently based on how they feel about themselves or about how they've been programmed to feel about themselves. If that is in contrast with how they are actually seen, then people will work against your success. So it's good to know what your Aruta is. So, the Aruta Lagna, when you have Jupiter in the third house, this is a really great placement for Jupiter. Reason for that is because um, the third house is an Upachaya house, just by itself. It is the natural placement of the third sign, which is Gemini. So Mercury has a lot of energy. So it's a very energetic house. It automatically amplifies whatever planet goes in there. It is the house of your bravery. So you can see if somebody is a brave person or not, depending on, you know, the health and the planets that are in there. It also shows your willpower, your ability to follow through and to, you know, um, you know, decide to make things happen and to follow through with it. It does also represent your physical energy. So you'll see if, if somebody's energetic in life. It's an upachaya house, meaning that it, get, it gains power over time. So um, now when you have an expansive planet like Jupiter, which moves into this sign, then what ends up happening is that this house turns up the volume. So whatever the natural tendencies of Jupiter are, get, um, get enlarged when Jupiter comes into this house. Jupiter is also aspecting the 
seventh house, the ninth house, and the eleventh house. So Jupiter is one of the significators when it comes to marriage and children. So Jupiter from here is looking at the house of marriage, the house of relationships in general. Jupiter likes this. This is a good placement for Jupiter. And again, as, as Jupiter continues to get stronger over time, his aspect onto the house of relationships will increase. He is looking directly on his own house which is the ninth house. The ninth house is the natural house of the ninth sign, which is Sagittarius, the sign of the priest. The priest that's doing the rituals in public in the temple for people, expounding the truth, uh, radiating his spiritual energy, his blessing. So this makes Jupiter very happy as well because he's looking directly at his own house, which means that he really has now this platform from which to communicate his truth, which is the third house, is communication. Communication, writing, um, sales, uh, but you know this is where Jupiter wants to talk. I've, I've called this the, um, the voice of optimism because Jupiter is a very optimistic planet. So here Jupiter gets to sit on the lectern as a podium and he gets to scream his truth to the temple, to the relationships. And his third aspect is towards the 11th house, the house of gains, the house of networking. So here Jupiter's in a very powerful position. He has this third house power of communication communication to groups, communication on a regular basis. The third house is uh, writing and communication um, repeated, short-term writing and communication, as opposed to the fifth house, which is where you write your, you know, your Bibles or your, you know, War and Peace novels or, you know, the one film that, you know, the, uh, represents a generation. That's the fifth house. Third house is continuous communication. Uh, this is the house of sportscasters, of newscasters, of journalists, of uh, people who write, write short novels, blogs, vlogs, reality TV shows, TV series, repeated communications. So this is a place where Jupiter can really continue to communicate on a regular basis his truth, his spiritual truth. So uh, the 11th house is also an Upachaya house. So what does that mean? It means that Jupiter's not only getting more powerful over time, but the 11th house is also getting empowered and he is giving his beneficial aspect to the 11th house, which is the house of your gains. Now the third house and the 11th house work together very well because the third house is your willpower, your um you know, your commitment to follow through throughout life. So a strong third house means somebody can is going to be successful. Nothing will get them down. You put Jupiter in there, which is the planet of optimism. There's nothing, this person, nothing gets this person down. This person will not give up, will continue to fight for what is truthful and good. This is like, this would make a good peace activist. You know, somebody who has Jupiter in the third house, they will be the kind of person that will say no matter how bad things get, you know, if, if the government is, is taking people and putting them in prison for, you know, whatever, this person will say, I refuse to give up. I refuse to stop believing in human beings. I believe that we can overcome this injustice through love, through tolerance, and he will continue to give that message and it'll get stronger as they get older. Um, in terms of career, the 11th house wants to give you uh, rewards on your investment in your career. And so as the 11th house gets stronger, Jupiter's aspect on the 11th house m gives people greater success over time in their business. The 11th house is the house of networking, long distance networking like internet. Um, so Jupiter here is communicating from his podium and he has this avenue through the 11th house to communicate to the whole world. So again, this is a great place for spiritual writers. Um, again, his main aspect is going to be on the 9th house, which is the house of spirituality, the house of Dharma, uh, the house of good luck. And so everything that he communicates, even if he's a car salesman, you know, if he goes into... 
uh, uh, you know, becomes a car salesman, he's going to be the salesman on the lot that when you meet him, he's not going to jump into wanting to sell you cars. He's going to be wanting to get to know you. And, and then the, you'll, you know, he'll talk about, wow, how can this car help you? And oh, you do this for a living. Well, here, I know this car will help you, you know, and then they're gonna, he's going to want to talk to you about f your family. And, you know, he's, he honestly wants to help you uh, find out your best uh, dharma, your best path in life. So if he's a car salesman, if he's a, a realtor, if he's, you know, he sells widgets, he, he's, he's really trying to do it to help you get through life and enjoy life. And he's one of those people that, you know, he gives you your card and uh, gives you his card and, you know, it's like, yeah, okay, don't even have to decide today, but, you know, give me a call. If you just want to talk, give me a call. And then, of course, you're going to end up buying from him just because when you're ready to buy, that guy was so nice to you and wanted to help you so much, you're going to want to give him your money. So it's a great placement for salesmen. It's a great placement for uh, novelists. Like, um, you know, if you want to write, uh, again, not war and peace, but if you're writing like a series, like if you write a book series, um, this is a great placement for that. So... Um, you know, you could write a fictional series about, um, you know, spirituality and some, you know, you could write a spiritual series about the monk who transforms the world and, you know, or, you know, write for a, a TV series, you know, a cable TV series, internet series, something like that. So uh, Jupiter expands. Jupiter is optimism. And here Jupiter just shines his light of optimism very, very brightly. It's a really wonderful placement. So this is one of those, um, this is one of those arutas that if you have this as your aruta, you probably already feel a strong connection to it. And so unless, you know, you went through some childhood issues where you were told, you know, you have to be more practical, stop being so uh, I, you know, pie in the sky, unless you have some conflict with yourself, you're probably going to feel very connected to this aspect of yourself. But in my experience, again, when it comes to the Aruda, in order to get the most out of your career and your life, you not only have to know what your Aruda is, but you have to um, allow it to shine. So I recommend whatever your Aruda is that once you know what it is, you create a costume for yourself. You imagine what is the eternal spiritual optimist, you know, and listen to your instincts. And Jupiter will guide you, you know. One of these these people, um, uh, unless their moon is is really you know having problems, these people usually have a very strong ability to listen to their intuition because Jupiter is one of the planets of intuition. And uh, so they're able to listen and find out, you know, what exactly they're projecting. It's okay if you have uh, trouble with it because Jupiter says, you know what, I don't really know exactly what my, you know, my focus is, but I'm going to have a good time trying this out and trying that out. It's all good. You know, Jupiter is one of those people who created that phrase. It's all good. That's Jupiter right there. So again, this is all going to depend on the sign that it's in. It's going to depend on uh, what other planetary aspects are on it, the you know the health of, of Jupiter, the health of um, you know the Lord of the sign, um, if there's any planetary conjunctions, sign aspects. So again, you're going to need all that information to really find out what your Aruda is. For that, you want to go to astrology.thunderwizard.com. If you want to learn the kind of astrology that I teach, then uh, you are going to want to take advantage of this opportunity that I have here, which is for the month of May only, we are going to be giving out a two-for-one special, which is the astrology certification and the rune reading certification as well. So for that, you want to go to twoforone.thunderwizard.com to find out uh, how to take advantage of that. If you're interested in learning the kind of astrology that I teach, then uh, 
it's in your best interest to take a look at this course, and here's why. Uh, listen, there are no shortage of extremely deep, um, powerful, resourceful Vedic astrologers out there who have knowledge in things that I haven't even begun to look at. Uh, I created my style of astrology reading based on my personal needs, which were I desperately needed something that was going to help my life get better. I was struggling. And, um, you know, I was, I was always just barely, a, you know, surviving. And I wanted something practical. I was tired of going to astrologers and having them tell me things about, you know, here's your personality this week. And, you know, there's this uh, uh, transit coming up and this is the good. I wanted something. Give me a tool that I can use, that I can practically use in my life to make my life better. So in the readings that I give and the style of readings that I teach astrologers to do, the things that I give will be there for you for life. I tell you which planets want to work with your three minds throughout your whole life. I tell you what is the most powerful mantra and ritual. You have to know which direction to face, what offering to give. That's going to be in your chart. And that's something you can do, you know, when you're 10 years old or when you're 100 years old. That will always be there for you. Your aruta will always be there for you. And the truth is, is if somebody came to me and said, listen, I only have five minutes, I want you to give me the most important thing you can give me in a reading, I would immediately go to their Aruda, tell them what their Aruda was, and tell them you got to create a costume, write down two lists, what you like and what you don't like. The things that you don't like about your Aruda are your ego um, sabotaging, self-sabotaging things, and those are the things you have to punch up. Be that thing that your Aruda is that's embarrassing to you, guaranteed success. I know because it worked for me. So this is the kind of reading not only that I give, but that I teach you to do. And if you want to get certified by me, then you can create your own business and or you can be uh, highlighted on this website here, astrology.thunderwizard.com. Okay, so that's it for me. Congratulations. If you have Jupiter in the third house, uh, especially if you have a powerful, happy Jupiter, you know, maybe looking at your moon and your Rahu and whatever else, then you are a very lucky person. Congratulations. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can go up here and um, I'd be happy to share what I know uh, about your chart. So that's it for me. Now let's see, we've done, in the third house, we've done Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Jupiter. That leaves the two nodes, the karmic nodes, and that'll be very interesting. So uh, I'll see you in the next one. We'll talk about Rahu in the third house. Okay, talk to you soon.